All right, if you saw the first video on the multiplying of decimals, then we're gonna do the division of decimals. So again, you might wanna pause this, screenshot it so you can see the problems. I'm not doing all of them, so just keep in mind I did do some of the multiplications. Now I'm gonna do the divisions, but if you do need help with these, I do have a bunch of these that you can review later on. So we're gonna go ahead and start with these ones. So when we're dividing with decimals, um, notice that with this number, here, we're just gonna put the decimal where it is right off the bat. So we're just gonna line it up, put it above it, and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna see what we have happening. Now six can't go into three because it's obviously not big enough. So we're gonna put this zero right here. We're gonna put a zero right here because six times zero would give me a zero. So then we're gonna subtract that. Three minus zero would be three. And now I'm gonna move that one down to that line with it. And now I'm gonna see what goes into 31. Six can go into 31 five times without going over. And that's gonna be six times five is 30. So we're gonna subtract 30 from 31, and that's gonna leave me with one. And then I'm gonna bring that two down, and now I'm gonna assess six times what would give me 12. And the answer would be two. So then I have a nice zero remainder here. So my finalized answer would be 0.52. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the next one. So again, we're gonna put the decimal where it is, right above it, and we're gonna go ahead. And here, if you want, you don't need to do the zero into this. If you want, you don't have to, it's up to you. Eight goes into 28 a total of three times without going over. So eight times three is gonna be 24. So you're gonna subtract 24 from 28, which is gonna leave me with four. And then we're gonna bring the eight that's there down and then eight goes into 48 a total of six times. Nice and even, no remainders, because 48 minus 48 is zero, so 3.6 would be your finalized answer. Now, what happens when we have decimals over here like this? So when we have decimals over here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that decimal and we're gonna make it so that it's a whole number. And by doing that, we're gonna have to move the decimal this way to the right. How many spots? One, two. So if I'm gonna move this two spaces over here, I can't just move that, I have to move it over here. Now there is no decimal here, so what I'm gonna do is just add this in, and I'm gonna go, this would be where the decimal would be at the end of the number. I'm gonna go one, two, and I'm gonna plug in a couple of zeros there. So now I'm at 3,000, and I'm gonna divide that by 125. Now, 125, obviously is a pretty decent sized number. And these, by the way, and the booklet tell us that we cannot use a calculator for this. So this is something that you would have to do. These are types of questions that you might have to do by hand on the GED. So what you're gonna have to do here with this is you're gonna have to take a look and you're gonna have to figure out, well, how many times can 125 go into 300? Now, if I'm thinking about that, um, you know, obviously if I double this, it's gonna be 250. So this would be as good as I'm gonna get. So this is gonna be times two, and you're gonna get 250, which is as good as you're gonna get right this, because if you go any higher, then it's gonna be over. So if you subtract 250 from 300, you're left with 50. And then we're gonna bring this zero down that's left, and you're gonna see how many times can 125 go into 500. So again, if two of these is 250, then that would mean four of those would be another 250. Well, 250 and 250, that would be 500. That's exactly what you need. So this goes in 24 times, nice and even. Leave me with a zero remainder. So my finalized answer would just be 24. And then for this last one, we're gonna do that. So you can see there is a decimal in both numbers. So we just have to move this decimal over one place to the right. So we're gonna make this move one place to the right, and that's where the decimal is going to be. I'm gonna put it up here so you can see it. And then we're gonna go ahead and start to look. So 28 can go into 39 one time without going over. All right, so you're gonna subtract nine, plus, or nine minus eight is gonna be one, three minus two is gonna be one. And then we're gonna bring down the seven. So now you have to figure out how many times can 128 go into 117. So the best way to kind of like think about how to do this is I my personal way of doing this is kind of just thinking about, okay, well, if this was roughly 30, 
I'm just gonna kind of round it up. And if this was roughly 120, then it should go in about four times, right? So then we're gonna try seeing what happens if I do four times. So eight times four is gonna be 32, carry the two. And then you've got four times two is eight, nine, 10, 11. So that's 112. So four will work. And then you're left with 112. So I'm gonna subtract 112 from 17. And that leaves me with five. I'm gonna bring down this six right here. And then I want to see 100, oh, sorry, 28 can go into 56 nicely. It goes in twice and nice and even. And so that's going to be 56 with a zero remainder. So my finalized answer on this one is 14.2. And if you want more questions like these, find them on my YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok at UN Algebra. All these are going to be located in the GED playlist. Don't forget to like, share, and follow me for more.